Fighting game stories have come quite a long ways away from the early days of the genre. We've gone from paragraphs on screen to a few still images to fully realized story cutscenes. And while the genre still isn't known for its plot heavy emphasis, it's garnered a significant amount of attention with mainstream gamers and longtime fighting game enthusiasts. I'm happy to see this evolution through. After all, it wasn't always like this, and there have been missteps in this journey. <laughs> I want to take you back to a time where in which fighting games were at their inception. Fighters were reigned supreme in the arcades, but the attention they got was due to their competitive nature, and less so on their narrative. Remember, back then the idea of directly facing your friends and other people in the arcade was still a novel concept. Yeah, that makes sense. One of the biggest innovations in the genre came with Street Fighter 2, and being able to choose from a roster of 8 unique characters, all with their own fighting style and country of origin. It's here where we start getting the earliest snippets of fighting game story. Or is it? For the five people who play the janky mess that Street Fighter 1 was, I can only imagine how cool it was to notice that Sagat entered the second Street Fighter tournament with a giant chest scar after fighting Ryu in the final battle of the first game. This is what story was in the earliest days of fighting games. It was picking apart bits and pieces from every source of information available. I'm talking character bios, ending screens, animated and live action movies, comic books, you name it. If it was tied into the game, I and other fighting game fans would dig through it regardless of the varying credibility of the source. This was our world building. Supplemental material was obviously prone to story inconsistencies, but so were the original games to an extent. After all, retcons and other revisions happen all the time in the biggest fighting game stories. Going to 3D fighting games, developers improved the accessibility of narrative in their games, seeing callbacks to the previous games, having more elaborate and narrative-driven endgame cinematics. One of my favorite things following the Tekken series was seeing whose ending was canon. I recall playing through Jin's ending of Tekken 4, and then to my excitement seeing the intro cinematic of Tekken 5 following just right after that scene. For the longest time, arcade mode endings were the main way that the story was dropped, and by and large the most credible not factoring joke endings or sequels that outright said one ending is canon over the others. This is how it was since Street Fighter 2, and all the major fighting games that continued went like this, but in the background, things were changing. Midway was looking to expand the narrative within Mortal Kombat, and back then in the 90s, they had made two attempts at that apple, and while their attempts were not great, they were admirable attempts. So they were hindered by gameplay and of course, poor story choices. They would later come back to this idea in the conquest mode of the PS2 era games to mild success. It's when the NetherRealm Studios MK9 was released that the gaming community as a whole took notice of the refined efforts. With all their previous mistakes reviewed over, they had created a story mode, one which now all others seem to be judged upon. NetherRealm truly pushed the bar for all other fighting game developers in not only how they should be implementing narrative into their fighting games, but also has a hole on how they should be making more content-packed fighting games. Other companies have started to institute similar story modes with varying success. Games like Tekken 7 and Street Fighter 5 come to mind. While Arc Systems have tried a bevy of different ideas within Blaze Blue and the relaunch of Guilty Gear, their newest game Dragon Ball Fighter Z looks to be doing something completely different. For one, they've actually been emphasizing a new story mode, one of which that they actually dedicated trailers to. This is important because, after all, it's NetherRealm in the United States that's been revolutionizing the story mode and the Japanese game developers that have been kind of playing pickup games with them. And somehow I'm hoping that Dragon Ball Fighter Z could potentially raise that bar once again. Even if Dragon Ball Fighter Z doesn't look to do anything particularly new with story modes, I imagine it's still going to be an amazing game regardless. Who knows where story modes can be going somehow near in the future? Sure, NetherRealm may be revolutionizing it right now, but who's to say that not another company could come in and change the whole game again? Hey, thanks for watching. I know I haven't uploaded anything recently, but I do hope to remedy that in the future. So if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe.